so Disney is making it really challenging to be a fan of Disney. It's almost like they're trying to get rid of fans. And Lord knows there's a lot of YouTube channels that are chronicling in, in agonizing detail all of Disney's missteps. But the latest volley was them managing to annoy one of the not just best freelance artists that they hire, but in fact one of, if not the best modern pop artist in the world today, by the name of uh, Josh Agel, although you might know him uh, by his nom de plume of Shag. And he posted a few days ago a mug design that he had been commissioned by Disney to do that was then rejected by Disney. Sorry, by a major corporation. Um, it was rejected by major corporation on concerns of cultural appropriation. This tiki mug design being based off of the chanting tiki pillars inside the enchanted tiki room, their own ride. And uh, so he went and just got another company to make the mug. <laughs> um, so good for him. And uh, decided to go public with what had happened because Apparently, Major Corporation is not happy with him, but he is not happy with them either, and is in fact publicly questioning if he'll even um, actually deign to work with Major Corporation again. And this is um, sort of a major, or like artistic and creative blow to Major Corporation, perhaps more so than a lot of people who don't know who Shag is, um, and and what this whole controversy bodes. Um, might actually think how important this actually is. I don't want to focus right now on whether or not Shag was in the right to, um, for one, go and get his mug produced by somebody else, and two, um, to uh, take it public like this. I mean, I'm personally glad he did, because it's good to know what's going on. Um, but I won't discuss the ethics of that. Nor will I discuss the ethics of whether or not Tiki actually is cultural appropriation. That is a subject that I could make an entire video about. Like an actual proper video, not just in one of my rant videos, but an actual proper video about. Um, what I do want to talk about <laughs> is um, this absolute disrespect, first of all, um, that... Disney showed, sorry, major corporation showed to again one of the greatest pop artists in, in the world today. And again, what what does this mean? What does this bode for Disney and for Disney fans going forward, or Tiki fans in this case? Um, because I mean, in this particular, I mean, just just in the narrow focus of this particular thing, talking about Tiki and Shag and whatnot, um. They're in the Tiki community, and, and far be it for me to suggest that I'm some kind of expert on the Tiki community. I'm not even really uh, involved with it online anymore because of drama. <laughs> but um, one thing I think I can reliably predict is, well, I do know that there is a tremendous amount of respect for Shag in the Tiki community, in the mid-century modern art community, the, the lowbrow art community, the pop art community. And so if Disney wants to pick a fight with Shag, um, what they are probably going to find, I think I can reliably predict, is that it's not going to work out so well for them. <laughs> um, you know, who is going to stand in line and buy those mugs from Trader Sam's? Who is buying those merchandise? Who is buying those expensive tiki prints from Disney? Well, it's the tiki aficionados who have a tremendous amount of respect for this artist who Disney is now wagging their finger at. Well, that's cultural appropriation. You can't do that. That's bad. We're sort of ashamed of our own attraction, and we don't want to market merchandise for it anymore. And I can, I think, reliably predict the Tiki community is going to be like, okay, then we'll do you the favor, and we won't buy it anyways. Um, the Tiki community, I, like I said, I, I predict, um, will side with Shag, especially when Disney is wagging their finger at the tiki community about it being cultural appropriation which is an interesting turn of affairs because a lot of people in the tiki community myself included 
got into Tiki in general and Shag in particular through Disney. Um, that's how I did it. I, I went to Disney, uh, Disneyland for the first time in 2005 for their 50th anniversary. There's my little vacation planning video. And whose art is on the cover of this vacation planning video thing? That is, that is Shag's art on there. Um, he did a series of prints for Disneyland's 50th anniversary. See if I can pull out. There's a bit of a map in there. Some of Shag's art in there. Um, and it's, in fact, it's used in the graphics throughout this DVD, Vacation Planning DVD for the 50th anniversary. Because um, his style, his pop art style, very much fit the, the, the vibe that they were going for with the 50th anniversary of Disneyland, mid-century, Disneyland opened 1955. So they're going for the mid-century vibe, and that is what Shag does. That is his style. He did a series of prints for them, other assorted merchandise. And um, while I was there, I picked up like a series of postcards that he did for the 40th anniversary of the Enchanted Tiki Room. And um, maybe I'll post more <laughs> other other uh, scans on the uh, the video here. Um, but yeah, this is how I found out about it and how I found out about Tiki. Because I went to Disneyland in 2005, not really knowing or caring what Tiki was, um, going as a, as a relatively young goth, um, young adult goth. And I wanted to go for the you know the haunted mansion and the Disney villains and I was into Victorian science fiction so some of that like Adventureland aesthetic but then I went to the Tiki Room and discovered that and fell in love with Tiki and fell in love with Shag's style here and that's how I and how many people um, learned about him and now apparently Disney wants to wash their hands of that and what is gonna how was that going to turn out? <laughs> you know, um, wagging their finger at um, at uh, tiki fans, shag fans, the mid-century modern and and pop art fans, and that sort of thing. You know, who's gonna who who stands in line and buys these things? Buys these tiki mugs? This is a first edition uh, mug from Trader Sam's, the tiki bar that they made in the sort of mid-century retro mid-century renovations for the Disneyland Hotel. And in fact, this design on here is also pulled from the pillars of the uh, Enchanted Tiki Room. These are the characters on the mug that Shag designed that now Disney doesn't want to use. Who, who buys this stuff? Well, I mean, it's not really casuals who are um, going to be standing in line uh, for hours lining up outside Trader Sam's to buy a Tiki mug for 50 to 80 to 100 dollars. Right, that's the hardcore Tiki fans that now apparently Disney doesn't want our business, um, supposedly. Or at least they're a little bit like, eh, maybe just want to emphasize that and we'll, we'll pull mug designs and, and stuff like that and piss off, you know, one of the most respected artists in the Tiki scene and the modern pop art world. Um, and you combine that with all the other backlash <laughs> that Disney is getting over uh, its various creative and non-creative and political choices and so on. And that, none of this bodes well. I mean, specifically for this, um, you know, what this says, it doesn't bode well for the future of the Enchanted Tiki Room or Trader Sam's, the tiki bar that they made, or the whole Polynesian resort that they've got and that sort of thing. And that, now speaking personally, because again, I'm not a representative for anything, but speaking personally about how difficult Disney is making it to be a fan of Disney, is this seems like it's part of an ongoing process to get rid of everything that I like about Disney and then wag their finger about how I was a bad person for liking it at all. Um, I mean, I can give a list. Uh, Disneyland, Disney Parks, the, all the rides they've either gotten rid of or vandalized. They got rid of the Tower of Terror in California, which I loved. I thought was a perfect ride for that park and which introduced me to the Twilight Zone TV show, which is my favorite TV show. Um, consistently vandalizing parts of the Caribbean. First to add Jack Sparrow, then to take out the, the brilliant auction scene created by Mark Davis to replace it with this, this comedy dead zone. Um, I can only describe what happened to Pirates of the Caribbean as vandalism. Just pure and simple, it's vandalism. Um, now they're taking out Splash Mountain. Uh, they have taken it out and are replacing it with a Princess and the Frog ride, which we'll get into later, but I don't object to Princess and the Frog. It's just, I like Splash Mountain. 
uh, the Jungle Cruise. They changed that so that it, you know, it took out the indigenous African people, the black people, so as not to offend anybody. They, uh, they put in the scene with chimpanzees that has no inherent comedic value. And, um, you know, they, they may even made sure to talk to chimpanzee experts that wouldn't offend the chimpanzees. But then they put in a gratuitous joke at the expense of Canadians. So thanks, Disney, for, um, you know, communicating that it's okay to offend Canadians because we don't matter, right? Our dollar is garbage anyways, right? So who cares? It's okay to offend us. Um... I mean, I go on and on. There's not, I haven't hated every change to Disney rides, but I just see this consistent pattern of them just getting rid of everything that I liked, um, vandalizing everything that I liked, um, or uh, just whatever. I mean, and, and even just small things, too. Um, they got rid of the Court of Angels at Disneyland in New Orleans Square to make it a foyer for Club 33, the, the super expensive, super rich exclusive club. Um, and in fact... When they renovated Club 33, they added in this window that is actually off-center from outside. Um, inside, it's completely dead center where it's supposed to be. It looks good. But from the outside, where the public can see things, it's an off-center window. <laughs> it's like, okay, that tells us where the priority is, right? Um, yeah, it's just all these little things. That, to, to build Galaxy's Edge, the Star Wars land, they had to take away other sort of small quiet spaces like the, the petting zoo where not a lot of people went, but it was still a good way to get away from people. Um, all sorts of things like that. Just consistently getting rid of all these things from big to small, um, making it not as much value for money, you know, to, to while well, they keep raising the prices of everything, on and on it goes. Disney movies are not not even worth it anymore. Like, I don't care to watch them. Um, I just don't. No, nothing about what they're producing now looks appealing. Um, Disney Plus has virtually nothing on it. If it wasn't for Zorro and what we do in the shadows, I wouldn't even keep Disney Plus anymore. I personally have a better collection of vintage classic Disney movies than Disney Plus does. <laughs> so it's like, okay, that that might we might very soon come down to like that's a like a twelve bucks a month. I, I prefer to save. Um, what else? Oh, yeah. And um, they even took out the Disney store from my entire country. There are no Disney stores in Canada. This coat is literally the last thing I ever bought at the Disney store. And I actually added these patches onto it myself. Um, you know, third party patches, <laughs> not produced by Disney. Um, to, to sort of trick this out is this is my, my, my mid-century Disney homage coat. Because that's what I love is the classic Disney stuff. Um, not so much modern Disney, the classic Disney stuff, which is what, you know, Shag was appealing to, and now they've managed to piss him off. Um, so I mean, really, um, like I don't have anywhere, I don't even have anywhere to spend money on Disney. <laughs> like I can't even go to the Disney store and just like passively spend some recreational income on just weird like Disney tchotchkes or whatever. Like that, the, the opportunity isn't even there anymore. It's like Disney doesn't want me spending my money on them. And, you know, with Disney parks, like, yeah, sure. I, if I really wanted to, I could find the money. Um, I could find the money. I could square the money away and save it, whatever to go. But why? If they're getting rid of everything that I love, they're constantly renovating the parks to turn them into a mass market consumer experience that is no longer the Disney that I fell in love with. Uh, the, the Disney I went to, you know, 2005, 2006, 2012, 2015 was the last time I ever went to Disney, any Disney park anywhere. Um, you know, why would I want to spend the money when uh, they keep taking out things that I like and have opted to to try and offend me personally <laughs> as well. Um, when they announced that they were going to be changing Splash Mountain to uh, Tiana's Bayou Adventure, I left a comment to the effect that um, I like Princess and the Frog. I thought Princess and the Frog was a good movie, um, but I also like Splash Mountain. And the irony was not lost on me that Splash Mountain was based off of actual authentic black folktales whereas Princess and the Frog was a race-swapped book, uh, movie based on a book by a white author. And I had people who listed Disney Imagineering as their employer telling me I'm racist because I was defending authentic Black folk tales and rides based on them. 
you know, because white supremacists are very renowned for wanting to protect the integrity of, and exposure of authentic black folktales. Um, so it's like, okay, you know, Disney's calling me personally a racist, and um, they're taking all the things that I like about them anyways, so, like, what what is left? And so, um, I, I have to get that Disney fix elsewhere. I have to sort of go go deeper than just what the corporation is producing now and and get to the root of those things. So one of those like classic Disney, you know, just I still love the things that I have loved about Disney. Still love Fantasia. It's still my favorite movie. Still love 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. Still love classic mid-century Disney. Disney from when Walt Disney himself was still alive. I, I, I love that stuff still. So it's like, okay, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm going to the thrift store and slowly upgrading my collection of Blu-ray and that sort of thing. Um, I mean, I could, again, find the money to go to Disneyland, but instead, why don't I just go to the places that Disneyland is inspired by? Um, going to New Orleans is on my list of places I want to go. Um, I want to visit um, Hannibal, Missouri, of all places, uh, because Hannibal is where Mark Twain grew up. And it was actually Disneyland that got me into Mark Twain. Um, the Rivers of America, the Mark Twain Riverboat, Tom Sawyer Island, that provoked me to want to read his books, to understand where they were pulling this this material from, these ideas from, and, and this place from. Um, and now Mark Twain is like my one of my favorite authors, second favorite author after Jules Verne. The Mark Twain Riverboat is the only attraction poster I have in my home. Um, I don't have any other ones. It's just the Mark Twain Riverboat. It's a beautiful poster, too. Um, and it's one of my things that I loved about Disneyland. Just one of those quiet, like, you know, not, not a major e-ticket attraction, but just to get a mint julep and go on the Mark Twain and just ride that around the rivers of America. Well, now it's 10 minutes shorter because they had to cut it down to build Galaxy's Edge and all sorts of stuff. Anyway, but I want to go there um, because... Marceline, Missouri, like, is Frontierland. <laughs> like, you have the Mississippi River, you got a riverboat, you've got a, a quaint little small town main street, you've got the cave. It's like, that. it is, it is Frontierland there. And it's also, like, hour and a half drive or whatever from uh, Marceline, Missouri, which is where Walt Disney himself grew up. So to see that as well would be really cool. I've been to the Grand Canyon already and plan to go again. Um, you know, see the American Southwest, been to Yellowstone, all sort of stuff. Um, you know, a... a an annual pass to all the United States national parks, monuments, and forests cost $80 US. That is less than one day at Disneyland. It's an annual pass to all of the national parks and monuments and forests in the United States. Like, that's a pretty good deal in comparison. So why go to Disneyland's fake version of it when you can go to the real thing? Right? There's, there isn't a roller coaster in Bryce Canyon, but, you know, hey, it's the actual real Bryce Canyon. Um... And then with the Tiki stuff, it's like, okay, Disney doesn't want to produce Tiki stuff anymore. That's fine, I guess. I'll just go and get Tiki stuff elsewhere. You know, if, if I could afford it, I would buy Shag's prints directly. He's got a great one that he just put out here um, that is inspired by 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. And I wish I could afford it. <laughs> but uh, it's, a, it's a print run of 200 prints for $2,000 US a piece. Uh, which is a bit too rich for my blood, but it does tell me at least that if Shag chooses not to work with Disney anymore, he's not going to suffer for it. Right? Disney is the one who's going to lose the the money on that regard, right? And it's not like them pissing off Shag isn't going to get around the Tiki community either. So, I don't know. But, I mean, the what, what actually, what I find most sad, <laughs> as far as like Disney and Shag breaking up, is that I, I've, sort of wanted in my heart for Shag to do like a cocktail hour on the Nautilus print. And I, I maybe not $2,000, but I would definitely try and, and get a copy of that print. Um, I guess that's not going to happen now, is it? <laughs> so, um, but that's okay. Disney apparently doesn't want my money. Disney doesn't want to make that print. Disney doesn't want to produce these mugs. I'm not going to break a sweat over that. Disney doesn't want my money. Um, if they're going to let their Imagineers call me whatever names online, that's their prerogative. Um, but it just, I mean, they're making it really easy for me not to spend money by not even having a Disney store in my entire country. Um, by by constantly changing Disneyland to turn into something that isn't the Disneyland that I know and, and follow up with. And 
why this even matters, right? Because, oh, it's just a mug. I've, I've seen that comment go around with the people who are on Disney's side in this. It's like, oh, it's just a mug. Like, whatever, get over it. It's not just a mug. Because here's the thing. Disney's product are not movies. It's not theme park rides. It's not cruise ships. It's not tchotchke, tchotchkes and toys and, and cheap plastic garbage made in China. Disney's product, what Disney is selling you, is the brand. The Disney brand. And the feelings that you get for this brand and the parasocial relationship you develop with this brand, right? The, oh, the, the dreams and wishes and magic and wonder and all the things that Disney names cruise ships after. That's what they're selling. And the medium through which they sell that to you are the movies and the theme parks and the resorts and the cruise ships and, and all those sorts of things. You go there as a medium to experience those feelings and develop that parasocial relationship. Now, that comes with an implicit challenge is that if you are going to sell the feelings and encourage people to develop those feelings, then you have to treat that really carefully. Because um, if you withdraw from that parasocial relationship, if you break up with people, um, it feels like a betrayal. <laughs> like you, you realize that you've, you love something that said loved you. You know, when you go to Disneyland, oh, welcome home. Oh, wasn't that nice? But really, they don't love you back. They are major corporation. They don't love you back. And so it feels like a betrayal when they wag their finger at you for being disobedient and being a bad person. They want to be the little Jiminy Cricket sitting on your shoulder telling you what's right and wrong and wagging their finger at you about you shouldn't like Tiki because it's cultural appropriation because uh, none of the people working here bother to try and understand it. Um, that turns to anger really easily. Betrayal turns to anger really, really quickly. That's why love and hate are so very closely aligned. It's because when you offend love, it turns to hate really quickly. And um, that's that's what Disney's doing. That's what all this rage against Disney has become, is this sense of betrayal at the hands of Disney. They've betrayed the public trust as a family-oriented company. They've betrayed Tiki fans now by offending the like one of the most respected figures in the Tiki community and one of the most respected modern pop artists in the world. Um, it's not just about a mug. <laughs> right and you could say oh well it's just a mug like whatever who cares it's just rides it's just mugs whatever who cares it's just disney it's just a company that's the last thing disney wants the last thing disney would want is for people to just be blasé about it oh it's just a mug whatever because blasé people who just think oh it's just a mug whatever are not going to line up for hours for their crack to get a hundred dollar mug from Trader Sam's or whatever. <laughs> so, um, you know, oh, it's just a mug, whatever. That's not the attitude that Disney wants. Um, but if they insist on offending that customer base and chasing that customer base off and withdrawing even opportunities to spend money on them, then there you go. Um, that if they're not trying to encourage us to feel more deeply for that brand, then I mean that's all they got. That's all that, that they have left. And once it uh, becomes a like a purely commercial sort of cost benefit analysis, um, and, and a, a consumeristic exchange rather than that something originating in your feelings that in this relationship that you've developed with this corporation, then they're not going to look as competitive as they used to. Um, if the movies aren't entertaining, if the theme parks are too expensive and not worth the expense of going to while Universal down the street is doing all sorts of fun stuff, um, it's not going to, it's not going to last. They're not going to be competitive anymore. So, I mean, sure. Yeah. Disney, go ahead and alienate the Tiki fans. That's going to be a great idea. You, you, you go do that. And in some ways, and to finish off on this note, in some ways, I kind of wish they would. If they were going to get rid of the Enchanted Tiki Room, I, I kind of almost wish they just would do it um, for, for two reasons. One is that if they did, then that would just take away one more temptation for me to even go to Disneyland. Because uh, I even though I haven't been to any Disney parks since 2015, 
I do miss it. Like, part of me still misses it. Because I had that parasocial relationship. I had those feelings. I had those good times at Disneyland. Um, my first trip with my now wife was to Disneyland. And then when we went to Disneyland Paris, that's where we got engaged. And then we did our honeymoon at Disney World. Um, I've also been to Tokyo Disney. <laughs> um, you know, I had really good friends uh, who I miss dearly that, um, you know, we, we met over a shared love of Disney and we met up at Disneyland and had, had a great time. And, um, so I do miss it. And I do miss the feelings that I had for Disney. And so that temptation is still there. It's like, well, I could go to the Tiki room. I could go to the Haunted Mansion. I could, you know, I could still see and experience these things. So if Disney just, just, you know, rip this bandaid off and just got rid of it, then at least that would be one less temptation to want to go to Disneyland at all. Um, and then doing that would leave me with my memories of it. You know, I, I wouldn't have to sit through the experience of them vandalizing it and watering it down and changing it and wrecking it, um, updating it, reimagining it, right? I wouldn't have to live through that experience. And I would just be left with me and my memories of it, um, which can never be vandalized. Because <laughs> that's, it is what it is, right? So in some ways, I almost wish that if, if they were going to get rid of the Tiki Room, just do it. Just rip the Band-Aid off. Just get it over with. Um, I mean, I would prefer they didn't. <laughs> I would prefer that they, you know, defended themselves, stood up for Walt and what he did and the work that he and the Imagineers did and actually defended their work from apparently Disney's own employees. Um, but if they're not going to do that, or, and, or at least hold out until the regime changes <laughs> and people come into the company who can defend it. Although who knows if that's going to happen. Um, I'll have to see if there's a hostile takeover of Disney or whatever. But um, if, if the Tiki room is not going to get rescued, then just get rid of it. Um, alienates the fan community, but apparently you don't want us anyways, right? You do everything in your power to convince us to not love Disney anymore. Make it really hard to be a fan of Disney. And if that's the choice they make, then just get it over with. Um, otherwise, well, I guess I'll just go buy shag mugs and, and art elsewhere than Disney.